Hello and welcome to Mr. Conley's Math. We're doing lesson 2.2.2 today, problems 34 through 38. Be sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to get information on future videos. Notebook set up on the bottom right hand corner, we're doing our homework. Let's remember we always want to title our paper homework, write the number of the problems in the focus note margin, show your work, box your answer, and write in complete sentences. Use the back of the paper if you need more room. All right, guidelines for using this video effectively. This means all of you. Watch and listen to the video. Sound should be on. Do not skip ahead and do not just mindlessly copy the work. Pause the video when you need time to write or think. Put a question mark next to the problem you don't understand. Rewatch the video when needed and ask questions in class or in the comments below. 34. Assume that the shaded tiles in the large square at right each have an area of one square foot. Use the information to answer the following questions. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. So it says, what is the total area of the shaded squares? So it's going to be something square units for question 34A. So it's shaded means that they're gray. So let's go ahead and count all the gray ones like this. Okay, go through. Once you get your answer, go ahead and put it in right there. All right, what is the total area of the unshaded squares? So that would be the white ones. So I recommend you doing something like this on your screen. Or you could print out a picture of it or just count what I'm doing right here. I'm just going to go ahead and draw them out because it's so much easier to count once we can see all of those squares. Okay, now do the same thing. Count all the white squares together and put your answer down there for square units. Find the total number of square feet of the area in the figure in two different ways. Well, we know that this whole thing is all the white and gray squ uh, scales, or shaded squares together. So if we want to find the area, we could just add up all the gray plus the white squares, or the clear squares, whatever you want to call it. And that'll give us the total squares. Oops, that says total. I know you can't tell. Area equals the total. And go ahead and put that number, those two, add those two numbers together and put your answer down in here. And then find that another way um, could be that, well, we know there's seven squares up and down and the seven squares from left to right. So if we just multiplied those two numbers, seven times seven, we could put the answer right here. And that would be our square feet. Let's put square feet here too. Forgot it says feet, so that means these each represent one by one foot. And then put that in there, pause the video, and then when you're done, let's continue. 35, Hector measured the area of his desktop by covering it with quarters. Okay, so now keep in mind he's talking about his desktop. He's not talking about his virtual desktop on his iPad or on his <laughs> desktop computer uh, measured the area of his desktop by covering it with quarters okay 25 cent coins so imagine the 25 cent coins going all the way across and all the way down and everywhere in between okay and doing that you may notice that when I'm drawing the circles no matter how close I get them together there's still gonna be little crevices uh, in between them little cracks, little spaces that are not covered. So even if I counted all the quarters up and down and multiplied them together to find out the entire area of quarters, I still would not know all these the sum of these little crevices in there, the little cracks. So because of that, I can't I can say that Hector cannot find the area using circular units because well, basically, these are squares. Square units for a reason, because it covers all the area. This is a square-ish shape. So that's why we use square units. So go ahead and answer that in there, and then pause and unpause when you're done, and move to the next question. 36, use the numbers 2, 3, and 4 in the operations, also known as mathematical processes. I like to say processes. I guess you could say processes of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Okay, so an operation 
It's not something that happens in the hospital. In math, it means addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. Those are the four basic operations. There's other ones too, but these are the four basic. Okay, so we want to create three different numerical expressions. Okay, remember numerical expressions are um, a collection of numbers and operations that doesn't have an equal sign. Okay, and we want three different values, so you can't do the same thing over and over again. But one of them has to equal 14. All right, let's do the easy one first. Uh, go ahead and take these numbers, 2, 3, and 4, put them together in any combination that you'd want. So 2, 3, and 4. What comes to mind, I'll do addition first. So I'll just add these together. Remember, I don't put an equal sign because it's an expression, not an equation. An equation has an equal sign. So I'll just leave it at that, and that's that answer. Okay, and then you got to figure out one that adds up to or comes to a value of 14. It doesn't have to add. It could subtract, multiply, or divide, or a combination of all of those. Okay, so we've got, we can't do 2 plus 3 plus 4 because that's 5 plus 4 is 9. And we know that 9 plus 5 will give us 14, but 5 is not one of those options. It's either 2, 3, or 4. Okay, so we got to do something different. Uh, let's, let's try multiplication. Let's see, 2 times 3 equals 6. And then let's use the 4 again. We don't want to multiply it by 4. That would be 24, so let's add 4. And that gives us 10. We're pretty close. And it doesn't say that we can't use the number more than once. So if we just add, if we're at 10 right here, we can just add 4 again. And that'll give us the 14 that we needed. <coughs> okay, so then the last one, we're free to do whatever. We've already done all the other ones. So go ahead and just make your own right there. Be creative. Uh, use as many or as little numbers as you like. 237, what's the best way to display the data below? Why? Display the data using the method you choose. Daily temperature for Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, what a nice place. Wish I could go there right now. Okay, so Honolulu, Hawaii is always <laughs> between 83, 83, uh, 79, 79. Looks like it's either in the 80s or in the late 70s. Okay, so temperature is pretty boring. It stays the same, uh, not too cold, not too hot. Okay, so let's think about the ways we could display this. We've got the stem and leaf plot, the dot plot, the bar graph, and the Venn diagram. Let's go ahead and eliminate the obvious that we're not going to use. We're only talking about temperature here, so we're not comparing two or more things, so a Venn diagram would not be useful because there's nothing to compare it to. If we're doing Hawaii, Honolulu, Hawaii versus uh, California or Arizona, uh, then we could use a Venn diagram, I suppose, but this one is just two different places, just one place, one set of temperatures. All right, and then stem and leaf plot and a bar graph are very similar, and they compare different sets of numbers. Uh, this one, we've only got numbers in the 70s and the 80s and so because of that our stem and leaf plot would look you know it have seven and eight and there'd be some 70s there'd be some 80s and <laughs> that doesn't tell us a whole much about the temperatures uh, it's not as visual as it could be and then same thing a bar graph would be the same uh, similar except it would be just up and down like that for 70s and 80s and again, we know there's a few 70s and a few 80s, um, but not a whole lot about what's inside the 70s and 80s. Is there a lot of low 80s? Is there a lot of high 80s, mid 80s, 70s, etc.? So because of that, we probably want to try the dot plot. So let's go ahead and do the first thing we always do. We're going to put them in order from least to greatest. I did most of it for you right there. Still need to fill in the rest. Go ahead and pause the video and do that. Okay, I'm assuming you've done that, and now you, when doing that, you'll notice that 78 is the lowest and 84 is the highest. That would be the maximum value, and this would be the minimum value. 
So that means we only want to do a number line between 78 and 84. So let's make one like this. Okay, now it's time to put our dots. So 78 is the first, so we'll just put a dot in there. If you've got, uh, I've got line paper here, but if you have graph paper, go ahead and use these, the, the squares within the graph paper to make your dots. Okay, so if there was more than one row for 79, or 78, uh, there's two 79s, so that means you could fill it in like that. I re recommend doing that because it makes it look nice and neat, and uh, it's a lot easier to see the numbers and, and compare them when you do it accurately like that. But if you're like me and you don't have the graph paper, you can just put the dots, probably do it in the center of each line, like that. So that way they're about the same distance and you can compare them very easily. All right, next is 80s. There's lots of 80s on here. Uh, there's at least five, so I'm gonna do quite a few here for you. All right, and then you can do the rest, add those all up and stack them up like that. Stack up all the 80s, 81s, 82s, 83s, and 84s and see what it looks like. Um, pause the video and then when you're done uh, remember you gotta uh, explain or display the data using this method and explain why so I drew a dot plot you say something like that because the data is numerical it's in a it's in a line it's discrete it's there's a different number for each one uh, there's lots of different reasons you can put it in here, but basically the number, the data is uh, in order, and the best way to show that would be with a dot plot. All right, last one. Find the missing numbers that makes each of the following number sentences true. Okay, so number sentence is another way of saying an equation. So, oh, don't know why I did that. Okay, so for A, we've got 15 times a number equals 19. I'll write it out like this. Times a missing number equals 90. Okay, we can do this number sentence backwards. So we could say 90 divided by 15 gives us our mystery number, our answer. So remember, if we were to write it that way, we can just do it like this, use a calculator, or we can just write it, remember the first number goes inside the box, and the second number goes outside, and that, find the answer to that, and that'll give us our answer to go here, the mystery number. All right, B, 90 divided by a number equals 18. So 90 divided by a number equals 18. For this one, we can't go backwards and say 18 uh, times 90 gives us our mystery number. Uh, it doesn't work that backwards and forwards uh, with division or even subtraction because of the commutative property. It doesn't apply to those numbers. So 18 and the mystery number, these could actually be swapped. And the answer could be 90 divided by 18 equals that number because when we're dividing, we're looking for the two factors of the product, and we're just working backwards. So really, you know, it's this is the same as 18 times what number equals 90, so that's the same as 90 divided by 18 equals our mystery number, and we can get that by dividing this by 18, and that will give us our answer for here. Okay, for C, six times, this is just like uh, A, six times our mystery number equals 96. That's the same as 96 divided by six equals our mystery number. Okay, so first number goes inside the box, the second number is on the outside, has nothing to do with the fact that 96 is bigger. Oh, that's a common mistake students make. All right, that'll give us our answer. Put it in here. And then what number divided by 11 equals 13? Like I said before, we're looking for 
the opposite of the product of 11 and 13, which equals this number. So we can work backwards by multiplying 13 by 11 to get our mystery number. And that number will go in here. Go ahead and pause the video and finish that up. Unpause it so that I can tell you how, what a great job you did. And congratulations on completing your homework assignment. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to Mr. Conley's Math to get updates on future videos. Thanks for watching.